uh, on a regular basis to basically just introduce to the uh, marketplace uh, some solutions that we've been working on that I've been working on for quite some time. And I want to make sure that I'm able to uh, expose your organization to what we're doing so that you can certainly see how it can be an asset uh, for your organization uh, as we move forward. So let me go to our next slide here. And before we start, let's go ahead and uh, do a little housekeeping here. Uh, please make a uh, note of your questions so I can address uh, all the questions at the end of the webinar. And uh, please feel free to share uh, you know, what you got out of this webinar, because that's the reason why I put the webinar together, because I wanted to be uh, a, a, a situation where you're going to have some powerful takeaways. I don't want to invite you to this process and you don't have any takeaways for the time that you've invested uh, for spending with me. And then uh, lastly, you see the uh, email address there. I also want you to use that email address to uh, talk about the next step because I'm going to give you some things that's going to lead to what those next steps are. We want this to be the beginning of a conversation uh, that's going to bring about a very powerful solution in the whole, the entire diversity and inclusion space. And you're going to see how all of that play uh, as we go throughout the uh, webinar. So again, let me give you a little int introduction, background of uh, who I am, uh, how I, you know, why this, uh, this subject matter means a lot to me. Before I get off into my personal stuff here, I'm going to say the business stuff, I want to share a personal story with you, all right? And, and, and hopefully you can hear my heart and you can understand why I'm on the mission. You know, this is not just a job for me. This is not uh, another way to add to the bottom line of my company. Uh, this is a mission for me. Uh, several years ago, back in 2009 to be exact, uh, I had a, you know, a cousin, a uh, senior in high school, and uh, he was dating a, uh, a Caucasian young lady, and they fell madly in love. Brilliant young students, and um, they, you know, they they have the typical challenge that many interracial couples have in the 21st century, and theirs went to the extreme, and it got so bad to the point where the parents did not agree uh, of the relationship, uh, specifically the young lady's dad. Even though my cousin was a very sharp individual. Uh, just got accepted into the Juilliard Arts uh, School in New York. Very bright individual, bright future. They both were seniors in high school looking to graduate and do some great things. Well, unfortunately, uh, because they could not, you know, uh, have the kind of relationship that people who are in love can have, they took their life. You know, they, they committed a double suicide uh, simply because they just didn't want to live without each other. And, you know, I tell you that story uh, to, number one, uh, reveal to you my passion for doing what I do and to highlight how, how these unconscious biases can destroy a lot of things, you know, in our workplace, in our culture, in our communities, and everything it is that we're doing. So I have a personal connection, you know, with the things that I'm going to share with you uh, in this webinar. And I wanted to just make sure that I communicated that to you because, you know, we got to we, we have to begin to implement some things that's really going to move the needle uh, in this conversation for change in regards to building better collaborations between groups, you know, whatever those groups might be. And we we'll identify some of them uh, as we go throughout uh, the webinar. So let's start with some business stuff. Uh, as you can see on the screen, the purpose development. Is basically the product of almost 30 years and more than 20,000 hours of action research, uh, scrutinizing deficiencies in human development. So this is not something that I just thought about overnight and say, hey, that's a good idea. Let's get into this industry. You know, I've been doing this for quite some time. My company has become a think tank company where we go in and we solve complex issues, you know, regarding leadership, diversity, you know, so many different areas uh, that we do in the marketplace. So this is something that I've been doing for quite some time. And, and the findings was in, interesting. And I want to share those with you as well. The finding is this, is that when the human soul is lean in purpose, it, it increases the risk for dysfunctions in the way that people work, lead, build relationships, and culture. And I think that that is uh, typically what we're going to be able to identify with what's going on with diversity and inclusion, whether it be on a college campus or whether it be within a corporate setting, uh, that the human soul, when it does become lean in purpose, 
then it creates all of these dysfunctions. So my job as a purpose development expert is to reveal to you how those dysfunctions are applying toward the diversity and inclusion space. And we're going to take a look at that. And here's another powerful thought here as we go to the next uh, slide. It says, when a culture is lean in purpose, by default, people will tolerate diversity policies instead of celebrating the purpose behind diversity. And that's typically what we have in corporate settings. We have this uh, in higher education institutions as well, is that people, they, they, they go through diversity training, and the, the, the typical consensus is, is that we're just going to have to tolerate this. We're going to have to bear you know, this training. We're going to have to bear going through this process to try to make things better when it should be a celebration. And I think that that's the struggle that we've had in this entire industry is how do we move them from just tolerating the, uh, the initiatives that we're bringing to a place of celebration? And that's what you're going to see today as we move forward. So here's some takeaways. Uh, number one, we're going to help you. I'm going to help you understand the need for a diversity purpose. Uh, we're going to identify the components of a diversity purpose. We're going to recognize the path for building a diversity purpose. And then we're going to talk about the motivation to commit to building a diversity purpose. And you're going to see why that's important as well. You know, that motivational piece. Now, it's going to open your eyes to some tremendous thing to get involved. So let's start with this thought right here and is the fact that when we're talking about diversity and inclusion and building better relationships between races and groups, it's more than just talk. You know, it's been over 50 years since Dr. Martin Luther King's death. And we have not realized that coming to the table to talk about differences is a small matter compared to raising the diversity purpose IQ to build a table that feeds the appetite for purpose. See, here's the deal, is that we all have one thing in common. And we understand, you know, how we should be educated on what those differences are. So I'm not minimizing you know, our efforts to make sure that we educate everyone about the differences of the different groups. But what we have to begin to shift is, in, is that we have to shift from the differences to those things that we have in common. And those things that we have in common is that we all have, we all have this appetite, the appetite for purpose. Every person on the planet have this appetite for purpose. So as practitioners, we take the things that we have in common and begin to galvanize the people to come together and make an impact in this area. Because I'm sure that you would agree that traditional uh, diversity and inclusion training basically has left us in a position where we polarize the crowd. We polarize the audience because we're talking about the, what those differences are. And I'm going to reveal to you why that happened, why that phenomenon happened. So this is a solution that not that will not uh, that that will help you transition from polarization to galvanizing the audience so that now we can work from a commonality and we'll see how that play a play a part in what we're doing as well all right let's talk about the diversity purpose iq my company is the only company in the world that measures what we call the diversity purpose iq so here's the deal purpose is more sophisticated than what we do with our gifts and talents whole lot more sophisticated. That's the reason why I spent almost 30 years and well over 20,000 hours researching this, because it has a very powerful part to play in everything it is that we do and become. Harvard expert Nico Moko Johannes, he stated that purpose is the primary source for achievement. So here's the deal. If we're going to achieve anything significant in moving the needle for diversity, then we have to come back to the foundation that drives everybody. You know, the reason why we get out of bed every morning is because there has to be some kind of purpose to going to work. There has to be some kind of purpose for us doing what we do. So purpose drives everything that we do. So we're going to see how it drives attitudes and behaviors as well. So here's a high risk that, you know, I want to make sure that all my clients understand is that the failure to build the table that feeds the appetite for purpose will increase the risk of policy violation. See, I know that in many of my clients, I talk to them about, you know, the importance of their policies. They understand it more than I do. But what we have not looked at is that there's a risk there. When we, when we rely on the policy 
to achieve what the heart is not conditioned to do. And that's been a big issue when it comes to diversity and inclusion. So the diversity purpose training is designed to help all of our organizations make that shift, you know, from the policy to building and developing a culture filled with a diversity purpose. So when the risk is high for violating policy, collaboration will always be a challenge. You see, it's been over 50 years, like I stated earlier, since Dr. King's death, and we're still having some of the same conversations that we had 50 years ago. You would think that we would have moved the needle a lot more since that time, especially the work that Dr. King and so many others you know, gave their life for. So I think it's time to make a shift. It's time to make a change. It's time to disrupt the industry. It's time to disrupt our culture. It's time to change the narrative. And that's what you're going to see in this entire process. So let's talk a little bit more about risk management. The problem with relying on diversity policy to be the solu only solution for managing risk is that most policies lack the backbone to move individuals to embrace a change in culture. Now, I'm sure that you would agree that the culture is changing, but many policies do not have the backbone. In other words, people understand that the policy is in place, but the policy is not enough to move them to action. You know, I have a mentor, one of my mentors that I've had in my lifetime, he stated that the more that things change, the more there's a need for things that never change. I'm going to say it again. The more that things change, the more there's a need for things that never change. So as practitioners in this space, we need to begin to shift and begin to identify those things that never change. Well, I'm going to tell you one of the things that never change is that people have an appetite for purpose. That never change. A lot of we have different groups that have emerged over the years, you know, within our on our campuses and in the marketplace. Those things are changing on a regular basis. But one thing that never changes is that all of these groups is comprised of people. And people have an appetite for a purpose. So personal biases leave employees or students in a position to compromise diversity initiatives under certain conditions because the heart is not conditioned, you know, to move beyond that compromising state. And we're going to look at how we're doing that in a very powerful way to condition the heart because diversity and inclusion is a heart matter. It's not just a matter of policy and laws. It is a heart matter. So our, our challenge in the 21st century is how can we move these initiatives from the head to the heart? And that's where the diversity purpose come in at. So group representation, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, instead of achieving better collaboration, your organi organization will become a battle zone for group representation. And that's what we're seeing all across the country from small institutions to large institutions. It's just, it's becoming a battle of groups. You know, every group have rights. So it's becoming a battle for rights. So when people battle for group representation, it undermines the mission of diversity and inclusion. And here's where you want to be. You want to be a place where all colors can thrive, not just survive. And what we have in our cultures now is that we have a lot of people just trying to figure out how can they survive? You know, all the different groups just trying to figure out how can we survive in this hostile culture? All right. So it's, we call it the battle for power because not only do people have an appetite for purpose, but they also have an appetite for power. And if we if we fail to help them understand how to feed their appetite for purpose, by default, they're going to feed their appetite for power. So the battle between groups is a battle for power. However, if you desire to win the battle for diversity and inclusion, the culture must shift from feeding the appetite for power to feeding the appetite for purpose. All right. Dr. King made a very powerful statement uh, in his last book. And the last book was titled, uh, Where Do We Go From Here? Community or Chaos? And he, the statement goes like this. Power, when properly understood, is the ability to, to achieve purpose. So we live in a world where we are prone to feed the appetite for power, but come short in what it takes to feed the appetite for purpose. Now, the reason why I continue to put emphasis on that appetite for purpose, because that's what we specialize in here at the Purpose Development Institute. We are one of the leading organizations in the world 
that have systems and strategies to help individuals understand how to feed this appetite for purpose because it drives everything that we do. So here's the shift that we have to make. Uh, we must understand the dynamics for shifting the organization from a policy-driven culture to a culture that draw, that breed, that gives new life to DNI initiatives. All right. So here's a thought that I want to make sure that I bring to your attention, and that is, it's difficult to breathe life into diversity without a heart that's conditioned for purpose. And I see so many practitioners, you know, they, they, they've been in this game for a while, and it becomes weary, it becomes, you know, uh, a absolutely draining in some cases because you're fighting a battle, you know, of all these groups want to express their rights. So they're trying to find a way to breathe life into their diversity initiatives. Well, we have to understand what it's going to take to condition that heart, you know, for a greater purpose. So that was the need. All right. Let's look at the component of a diversity purpose because it's one of our objectives. All right. When you examine the components for creating a diversity purpose, you will explore the dynamic that moves DNI initiatives from the head to the heart. Okay. I, I'm kind of pausing here because I want to make sure that you know I put emphasis on what we're getting ready to talk about. That's where we are in this in this space of diversity and inclusion. How can we move it from the head to the heart? Remember what I stated: diversity and inclusion is a heart matter, you know, not a matter of just policy. So here are the components: is that number one, we got to have training that expands the capacity for purpose, because we all have been given the capacity for purpose. So how do we expand that? We're gonna talk about that. Uh, number two, another component. We have to have a culture that feeds the appetite for purpose. We're gonna talk about that. And then lastly, we have to have people who have a diversity courage. And we're gonna talk about that as well. Because all of these are very important and uh, they might be you know, new to your ears, but I promise you they are refreshing to your soul. Because when we engage in this process, we're finding ways to really move the needle for change in this particular space. So let's define what a diversity purpose is all about. And it starts with expanding the capacity for purpose, all right, which begins with defining diversity and what it means to your organization, all right? What does the diversity purpose mean to your organization? Number one, a diversity purpose is where people within an organization or society embrace purpose, watch this, as the genius for exploring the collective power of human potential. So here's what we've done in the past when it comes to DNI training. We've explored rights over the last 50 something years, all right? We looked at the rights and we needed to look at the rights. I'm not minimizing that, but everyone have rights goes back to the Declaration of Independence. We're going to look at that as well. But now we have to make a shift and understand that purpose is the genius for of human potential. And we're going to talk about why that's important as well, why that genius is important and how can you and I incorporate that you know, into our everyday use when it comes to being in this space. So here's a benefit. Uh, when purpose is the genius used for exploring collective power and human potential, it will minimize the battle for group rights. Wow. See, if we want to minimize that battle and make your job a lot easier, then we have to shift to that thing that we have in common. In other words, we have to raise our purpose IQ as leaders. What is the genius behind purpose? Because that is where all of the solutions to better collaboration, that's where it exists. All right. So it's a sophistication beyond group identification. DNI is a sophisticated process that requires all groups to embrace a sophistication beyond group identification. All right. I mentioned this earlier about the Declaration of Independence. All right. It said that all men are created equal, but in order for DNI initiatives to be successful, everyone within your organization must be trained to recognize that all men are also created to expand their capacity for purpose. See, that's where change takes place. I've seen it happen in so many areas with my corporate clients, uh, my nonprofit clients. This is where change takes place. This is where we begin to galvanize the audience, 
when we help them expand their capacity for purpose. So FIRE's training is great, and Starbucks did a great job in, on May 29th of last year when they had a major issue that stirred up the whole country about bias training. So they took extreme measures to ensure that employees are prepared to avoid the negative effects, you know, of biases. But here's a thought that I want to make sure you, you realize. Unfortunately, most organizations fail to realize that when the capacity for a higher purpose is not exercised, the risk will be high for discriminatory biases to reduce others to inferior classes based on race, creed, sexual orientation, etc. All right? So you can see how this is extremely important. All right? It's extremely important because we want to minimize the risk of those biases within our organization. And the only way we can do that is that we have to expand the capacity for purpose. So I'm introducing what I call capacity for purpose training. This is the main thrust behind the diversity purpose. So it's one of the most neglected training subjects in DNI. Uh, it's defined as the ability to expand your value beyond group identification. See, we all can we all identify with a certain group. But how do we build value beyond our skin color? How do we build value beyond our sexual orientation? How do we build value beyond our group? And that's what expanding the capacity for purpose allows us to do. So when the capacity of purpose is high, is high it will cause individuals to shift from demands for rights to adding value back to the world. See, here's the deal. Everybody wants their rights at this particular stage. You know, we have so many groups with so many rights. We need to help them understand what it's going to take to make that shift to add value back to the world. And that's what having a diversity purpose would do is that it put them in a very powerful position to be able to add value back to people, places, and things, the people that they come in contact with that's different. We have to begin to open up their understanding in regards to that. So let's talk about how we're creating that path. Because the capacity for purpose, uh, it is that path that opens uh, for making room for the purpose of other people. All right? So expand the capacity of purpose leads to uh, the, uh, the path that strengthens the commitment to diversity. And this is why I'm committed even beyond what I mentioned earlier, is that the fact remains equal rights are delayed when there's a deficiency in purpose. Your organization do not address the deficiency in purpose within the culture, the risk for dis discrimination will be high. EO compliance is critical is a critical need, but not at the expense of helping individuals move their move from compliance to collaboration. Wow. And and, and that's the reason why I'm on a mission. Because I want to make your job easier. How do we move them from compliance? to collaboration. So I have a thought that I put here and that I've learned over the years that purpose the chemotherapy that destroys the cancerous effect of discrimination. I've seen it happen on so many levels. And now I'm excited to be able to introduce it to the space of DNI. So we need policies with the backbone. All right. Policies empowers the organization, but purpose empowers the people. I'm gonna say it again. Policy empowers the organization, but purpose empowers the people. So now we're introducing a component, a solution on how do we empower all of these diverse groups that are on our campuses and in our marketplace that's within our culture. So if your DNI initiative remained text written on a piece of paper, individuals would struggle moving diversity from their head to their heart. It will make them feel like they're being forced like animals to embrace difference. And people don't want to be forced. They don't want to be force-fed DNI initiative. They want to know the purpose behind it. What's the meaning behind it? So when, D when DNI becomes a matter of purpose, the focus will shift to what I call the common core, where the appetite for purpose will be fed, and your policy will have backbone beyond the classroom. Doesn't that sound good? See, that's where you want to be. You want to have a policy that has backbone beyond the classroom. And expanding that capacity for purpose is the only way to give your policy backbone 
beyond the classroom to where now people begin to take ownership of this process. So we treat the common core here at the Purpose of Alma Initiative. So the treatment of diversity hasn't changed since the 1960s when we first started training people in DNI initiatives. So when DNI training first began, that's where we were. So training is designed to treat competing differences instead of treating the common core. Wow. This is why I see so many struggles at, is that we're treating the competing differences between the group. Well, let's make a shift to the common core because this is where value, where we share value beyond skin color. And if we don't treat it properly, people will never develop what I call a diversity courage. All right. So now in closing, because we come to the end, in closing, now the path for a renewed commitment is revealed. You're ready for diversity, purpose, motivation. Very powerful book here that I just uh, recently purchased over the weekend. And my question is, why would someone write a book like this? Uh, the uh, Diversity Delusion. And here's an excerpt on the screen of what she uh, wrote, what Ms. McDonald wrote in her book. She said, diversity. In the, academic, uh, in the academy are purported to be about bridge building and broadening people's experience. It, ha, it, ha, it's ha, it has had the, the opposite effect, dividing society, reducing learning, and creating an oppositional mindset that prevents individuals from seizing the opportunities available to them. And that's what she talked about in her book, is that our college campuses are shifting now. And not only the college campuses are shifting, but there's a shift in the marketplace as well. And, and, and it's causing us to lose focus on why we're there. And even on college campuses all across the country, it's causing them to lose the focus. And it's simply because we have not understood how to expand that capacity for purpose. So a diversity courage is when people develop skills to move diversity policies from their head to their heart. As a practitioner, you must understand that differences opens the heart, but raising the diversity purpose IQ penetrates the heart to move the soul to action. And that's what we want. We want to be able to penetrate the heart. That's what my training does. My training penetrates the heart. I can give you testimony after testimony as to how we've been able to penetrate, penetrate the heart in some hard situations. And that's the power of purpose. That, that's not you know, a credit to what we do, that's just the power of purpose because it penetrates people's heart. And we want to get to the root of why we're having so many challenges in this particular space. So remember that it's difficult to breathe life into diversity without a heart that's conditioned for purpose. We got to begin to feed the appetite for purpose. So conditioning the heart begins by feeding the appetite for purpose. This is the sum total of our existence that give us a meaning to exist and a purpose to perform. So here's the deal, as we close it out, everyone on your campus, everyone on your staff, they wanna have, they have an innate desire to know the meaning to their existence. You can't change it, all right? It's organic. They wanna know why they're here, what are they supposed to be doing? And they wanna have, be able to add meaning to why they're doing something, you see? So the appetite for purpose that's what it brings to the space, and that's why it's important to be able to develop the skill set on how to feed that appetite, because otherwise, we're feeding into all these different narratives that's going to bring more division between the group. So here are the benefits. The meaning to exist is the antithesis for racial biases. We all have racial biases. So how can we begin to displace those biases? Well, we have to begin to feed that appetite for purpose. Number two. The purpose to perform releases the courage to act beyond biases. And that's what we want. We want to be able to have people within our culture, they have courage. See, you have courage to be a leader in this space. But you want to be able to transfer that courage to people who might not be, this might, might, might not be their job description, all right? This is their everyday life. We want to be able to give them that courage so that now they can begin to move these initiatives beyond the classroom, all right? This is important. One more slide after this and we're done. 
we have to have a disruptive culture, all right? We have been great in America in using disruptive technology to advance our appetite for innovation. And in the last several hundred years, we have not had a disruption in the way that we develop people. And it has created major problems. So my company, we're on the leading edge of disrupting that space by bringing new models to help us understand how to move the needle when it comes to personal growth, move the needle when it comes to DNI initiative, move the needle when it comes to leadership. So feeding the appetite for purpose disrupt traditional training by doing three things. Number one, making diversity and inclusion accessible to everyone by cultivating a common goal through meaningful excellence. The human soul was designed for meaningful excellence. So we got to cultivate that. Number two, Exploring the sophistication of the soul, watch this, to attract new people to the conversation. There are a lot of people that are just tired of hearing the same old thing over and over and over and over again when it comes to DNI. So now we have to begin to formulate what are those new models that we need to introduce that's going to attract new people to the conversation. That's what we do. Creating a coherent value network that leaves everyone better off. That's what we do. When we go, when you go through the process of being trained at the Purpose Development Institute, our training leaves everyone better off. No one is leaving the room saying, well, what about my group? What about my rights? You know, because we can get into a whole dissertation on this whole issue of rights, but it's simply because we have not fed the appetite for purpose. And when we do that, we leave everyone better off. So when we open the aperture of purpose, we do more to value the plights of different groups. That's what my, my training, my company, my expertise is in, is that we help open that aperture of purpose. Purpose is the genius by which the collective power of human potential must be explored. We have to explore. If we're going to bring solution to this space, we have to explore the genius of purpose. Otherwise, we're just doing the same thing, expecting for different results, and that's called insanity. So it's time to make that shift. So in closing, there are several ways that you can connect with my organization. Uh, number one, we do keynote speaking to the employees and the students. Uh, we come in and there's a very powerful solution that we bring to the table you know, to expose them, to begin that process, to begin that conversation, to expose them to the systems and strategies that's going to allow them to be galvanized instead of polarized, all right? We do one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching as well as group coaching. Uh, we have a customized two-day staff training that we do that's very intense where we go through the whole process of measuring your diversity purpose IQ because I always say it like this, it's hard to change what you can't measure. So we want to measure where people are when it comes to their diversity purpose. So we measure that. We understand the science behind that, and we're able to move them to the next level of, of effect and change. We also have online self-paced coaching. We have a diversity purpose leadership track, and we have a new component that we're just introducing uh, that's still coming out of our lab uh, called the diversity purpose certification. Uh, we we train and certify coaches in our other program all over the country. So now we're making a shift to train practitioners to be able to transfer this skill set uh, to individuals within the organization so that now you can begin to create a culture. You understand how to build that culture that's influenced by diversity purpose. So with that said, ladies, I really appreciate your time uh, for attending. And I want to uh, open up. Uh, if you do have a quick question that you want to type in and I can address, uh, you can do that. Otherwise, you have my contact information. You can email it to me. You can set up a, a your initial consult so that we can talk about the next step. Just make sure that we do that. And then we can also talk about, you know, uh, uh, making sure that you all tell me what you got out of it. So uh, <laughs> I hope that you know, this you saw this as something that was value added for you. And uh, again, I appreciate your time. So ladies, if you don't mind, just do me one quick thing. Was it beneficial for you to go through 
uh, the webinar? Were we able to show you some areas where we can certainly add value to, to what you're doing on campus? Are you still there, ladies? I saw Miss Kimberly typing. Go ahead, Miss Kimberly. Gotcha. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, Miss Kimberly, is uh, I'm going I'm going to uh, go through the uh, recording make sure it's a good recording and uh if it is a good recording i'm going to send it out but you can also uh reach out to me uh via my phone number and that way we can have uh, further discussions about some of the content that we put that i talked about in the webinar So there's my phone number on the screen. Uh, you can certainly reach me at that number. And I uh, would love to uh, just kind of answer any questions that you might have and have further conversations with you about it. So again, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and close everything down. Appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully the uh, recording was great and I'm able to get that recording out to you. So uh, God bless and I look forward to connecting with you.